So I am delighted to chair this uh, afternoon session of our conference. Uh, so not so sunny Sunday afternoon. And uh, now uh, it's my pleasure to announce the talk by Professor Panasenka on non-Newtonian flows in thin tube structures. So please, you have uh, half an hour. Thank you. So first of all, uh, I would like to say that uh, it's a great uh, honor for me to participate uh, in uh, this uh, conference uh, dedicated to uh, 100th university, uh, anniversary uh, of uh, Olga Alexandrovna Ladizhenska. And so I'm grateful for to uh, the program committee to choose me as uh, an invited speaker. Uh, so my talk today, uh, is um, mm, uh, uh, devoted to non-Newtonian flows in thin tube structures. I would like to say uh, that uh, some sorts of non-Newtonian flows uh, were uh, considered by uh, Olga Alexandrovna Ladizhenskaya in her famous book. Um, in fact, there are different uh, types of non-Newtonian flows. I will precise uh, a little bit later what type uh, will be considered here. So the uh, results that I uh, oh, stop. Why it doesn't go? Ah, it is. There is something stopped here. Ah. Okay, the results uh, that are presented today, uh, they are just published in uh, the joint paper uh, with uh, Konstantin Pilatskas and Bogdan Vernescu. Um, and uh, the journal is uh, Mathematical Modeling of Natural Phenomena. Today it has uh, high rank and it is open access journal. So. Uh, uh, everything that I will present today, you can uh, find in uh, the whole paper that is published and accessible in uh, via internet. I will show this reference once more at the very end. Uh, so um, what are thin structures? Uh, thin tube structures uh, are motivated by uh, some uh, hemodynamic considerations, considerations, and uh, uh, these tube structures are smoothened finite unions of thin cylinders, uh, forming a network. Such domains uh, are geometrical models for a blood uh, vessels network. So here you see some types of uh, such uh, networks, for loops, and uh, so on. Uh, we uh, idealize a little bit these uh, real structures uh, as uh, such domains which depend on small parameter and consists of uh, thin cylinders. The um, diameter, the ratio of diameter to the length of such cylinder is taken as small parameter. And so they can form trees, loops, and so on. Um, so uh, first uh, papers on uh, uh, Navier-Stokes equation in uh, such uh, uh, structures uh, with uh, no slip boundary conditions at uh, the um, uh, lateral boundary, at, uh, appeared in 1998. Uh, and uh, then uh, the uh, non-stationary Navier-Stokes equations we considered together with Konstantin Pilevskas uh, in uh, uh, 2015. Uh, also with uh, no, no sleep boundary condition at, at the boundary. 
uh, and the Navier-Stokes equations or Stokes equations are extensively studied in such or similar structures last year, last years for uh, some uh, new settings such as flexible elect elastic wall, boundary conditions involving pressure, because in our papers inflow and outflow are given as given velocity, uh, curved linear channels or tubes, and uh, uh, of course non-Newtonian rheology. And uh, uh, there are several teams in the world who work in this topic, and uh, I would like to cite a uh, uh, not exhaustive uh, list, uh, Andrew Mikelich and uh, Sunitsa Chanic, uh, Eduard Marushik uh, Paloka, excuse me for typos here, and Igor Pajanin, uh, Sergei Nazarov and uh, Vladimir Kozlov, uh, Taras Melnik, um, we, our team, and uh, Ruxandra Stavr, and others as well. Uh, so uh, here only what concerns uh, Navier-Stokes equations and uh, uh, similar to them. Um, uh, in the present paper, we consider uh, the non-Newtonian rheology, uh, the flow with the strain rate dependent viscosity taking into consideration uh, all the boundary layers which appear in these uh, problems. And uh, we will construct an asymptotic expansion of the solution. So to uh, mention other uh, papers that consider non-Newtonian rheologies, uh, I would like to present uh, the paper by uh, Renata Bunoyo, uh, 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 Antonio Gaudiel and Antonio Laparti. Uh, they consider beam gum fluid uh, in T-shaped uh, structure, uh, but uh, they don't consider the boundary layers. So it will be in future. Um, and also the paper by uh, Maruchik uh, Paloka and um, uh, Igor Pajanin, uh, where they consider the pressure dependent viscosity. Our uh, non-Newtonian uh, rheology will be concerned mostly to uh, the dependence of the viscosity on uh, the uh, strain rate, and uh, uh, especially uh, these ass mathematical assumptions that we will introduce correspond to the so-called Caro law. So now I pass to uh, the writer's definition of thin tube structures. Uh, maybe uh, it was, uh, uh, you, you saw these definitions in my previous talks. So uh, we introduce first uh, N different points in Rn. N we consider two or three. Uh, and M um, closed segments, E1, E2, and so on, and Em. Uh, all points OI are supposed to be the ends of some of these segments. And these segments are called edges of the graph. And uh, these points are called either nodes, if uh, they are endpoints for at least two edges, or vertex, if uh, there is only one uh, uh, edge uh, which has this endpoint. And um, the edges can intersect only in these points, uh, endpoints OI. So if we take the union of all these edges, we uh, get the graph. Uh, this is uh, this uh, here. You see two pictures of such graphs, and um, we will also consider uh, so-called bundles of uh, the edges bundle uh, corresponding to some node. Uh, it is the union of all edges having this uh, uh, node as uh, common uh, as common end. So for example, bundle corresponding to O3 is the bundle uh, uh, with uh, edges E3, E4, and E5. Then uh, um, we um, uh, introduce the local coordinate system for each edge. And as edge has 
uh, every edge has only two ends. So we can start from OI or from OJ, and uh, respectively, we get uh, the uh, axis uh, X1 E. It means that it is local coordinate uh, oriented uh, from OI in direction of OJ or vice versa. Um, so now we are in position to define uh, what is the um, uh, thin structure. Thin structure, in fact, uh, we, uh, we can um, uh, interpret this graph as a skeleton, and now we will add some meat on it uh, in the, the form of uh, thin cylinders. So uh, to every edge E, J, we associate a bounded domain sigma J uh, from Rn minus one containing origin and having C4 smooth boundary. And for every edge E and associated uh, domain sigma J, also we will denote it sigma E uh, respectively uh, corresponding to this edge E, we denote the cylinder which is the Cartesian product of uh, a segment uh, of an interval zero E and uh, uh, epsilon time, one over epsilon time contracted uh, domain sigma E. So uh, this is the description of such cylinders. So this is a classical uh, thin cylinder. And uh, now if we, take the union of all uh, such cylinders corresponding to all edges, we will get uh, some thin structure, but uh, intersecting uh, near the bases, these cylinders may produce uh, some ugly uh, uh, angles, which we do not see in, uh, uh, in blood vessel system. So we add some smoothing domains, we, uh, introduce n copies of uh, uh, bounded uh, domains independent of epsilon, and then we contract them one over epsilon times and add in some neighborhood of every edge or uh, vertex, of uh, every node or vertex. And uh, so finally, uh, when we add also these smoothing domains, we get uh, such a thin structure. So epsilon small parameter is the ratio of the thickness to the length of each cylinder. And here you see these smoothing uh, domains, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, hide uh, these uh, corners. Uh, we assume that this boundary, the boundary of such domain uh, is uh, C4 smooth. We will also consider bundles of cylinders, uh, but these bundles of cylinders we will take with the corresponding uh, smoothing domain. So a, a bundle of cylinders is uh, one smoothing domain and uh, all cylinders that, that has uh, non-empty non, um, intersection with, with it. And we will also consider uh, domains omega L, which are in some sense deleted one over epsilon um, times uh, these bundles. But uh, uh, in this case, we will extend uh, the cylinders so uh, uh, that they will continue up to infinity with outlets and we get such domains. So you see here cylinders and uh, the domain, smoothing domain, but these cylinders go up to infinity, so they have no this second uh, base. Now, what concerns the formulation of the problem, we introduce, uh, uh, we start with two given positive constants, mu zero and lambda, and uh, we introduce the function, function nu, as a bounded C3 smooth function uh, from uh, the space 
uh, R n multiplied by n plus one divided by two to R. Uh, and uh, such that uh, this function has three bounded gradients. Uh, and with some positive constant independent on, on y. So what is the role, physical role of this function nu? It is uh, the following, that if we take the constant nu zero and add lambda multiplied by nu, we have the dependence of uh, the um, of the viscosity uh, on uh, um, on uh, the um, strain rate on the uh, derivatives of the strains. The strains are defined. Uh, the derivatives of the strains, uh, strain velocity, they are de defined as here as uh, uh, symmetrized gradient uh, of uh, uh, the velocity. And so uh, you see here as the main uh, partial differ differential equation, the Stokes equation for the divergence free uh, velocity uh, with pressure, but with viscosity, which depends on uh, these uh, components. And uh, uh, as the boundary condition on the whole boundary P epsilon, we will have given function uh, of order of epsilon, epsilon G. Uh, and G is equal to zero everywhere on the lateral boundary, except for the ends. So if I return a little bit to these pictures, uh, the ends here, uh, we will uh, introduce given function which corresponds to inflows and outflows. So uh, this function g is defined as follows. It is equal to zero everywhere on the, on the boundary of B epsilon except for uh, several domains, uh, uh, several uh, parts which are denoted gamma epsilon j, uh, which are uh, some parts of the boundary near uh, the vertices oj, and uh, uh, it has such dependence on um, x, uh, x minus oj divided by epsilon. And of course, we need to um, uh, respect this uh, compatibility condition that uh, the sum of uh, surface integrals of normal velocities should be equal to zero. So uh, the main, now I pass to the main result of our uh, paper. Um, first of all, uh, we prove uh, that there exists such lambda zero such that for all lambdas, uh, which are smaller than lambda zero, this problem ad uh, admits a unique weak solution. Uh, and uh, this solution uh, in, in, uh, in some ball, a unique ensemble, uh, independent of epsilon. And um, this uh, weak solution belongs to W32, and uh, the pressure uh, has the gradient from W12. Uh, it is the first result on existence and uniqueness. And the, the second result concerns the construction of the asymptotic approximation and its justification. And uh, I will uh, describe the algorithm of uh, construction of this uh, asymptotic solution. So uh, if you remember the results uh, concerning the uh, Newtonian rheology, there the structure of asymptotic expansion was such that at some distance of the nodes and uh, vertices, uh, the solution had form of so-called Poiseuille flow. And in the neighborhood of uh, these uh, uh, nodes, it, uh, it had the form of some 
uh, fastly decaying exponentially, decaying boundary layers. So the same structure uh, is kept in uh, this non-Newtonian rheology case. Uh, but uh, to prove it, it is much more technical because of this nonlinearity uh, of uh, the viscosity. Uh, so first of all, we uh, introduce the analog of the Poiseuille flow, which is called quasi-Poiseuille flow here. But it is, again, uh, a, an exact solution of uh, uh, this problem with uh, in, in an infinite cylinder uh, P, pi, R cross uh, sigma. And, um, but here we have this non-Newtonian operator and it is uh, divergence free and uh, uh, no slip boundary condition at the boundary. Every, uh, all right hand sides are equal to zero. Uh, if lambda is equal to zero, then we have standard Poiseuille flow, uh, which uh, is associated, as you know, to some uh, to some parabolic uh, shape of uh, 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 the solution, and only one component, the first uh, normal component, normal with respect to the direction of the flow of the velocity is different from zero. And- uh, Excuse me, Vivir Perish. Uh, could you repeat, uh, uh, new is a scalar function uh, or uh, matrix new, new, function? New is a scalar function. Ah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, the velocity has such a structure and X prime, they are transversal variables, or we can say tangential variables uh, with respect to the direction of the flow. And uh, the pressure uh, has this form uh, of, it is linear or affine uh, function. And uh, this alpha in the pressure, this coefficient, which is called pressure slope, is the same that this small index here. And this uh, uh, first component of the velocity satisfies nonlinear elliptic equation with alpha constant as the right hand side, this alpha. And at the boundary of the cross section, V P alpha is equal to zero. And uh, so uh, to any uh, alpha, uh, real alpha, we can associate some solution of this problem. And we prove some theorem on uh, existence and uniqueness for uh, lambdas smaller than lambda zero of uh, such Poiseuille flow. Then if we have this uh, Poiseuille, uh, Poiseuille velocity, then we can uh, define uh, the uh, flux, positive flux corresponding to this alpha. So everything starts with this alpha from the pressure. It generates the Poiseuille uh, velocity solving this equation. And then it uh, generates uh, flux F sigma alpha. And so uh, this uh, relation is non-linear relation between the pressure slope and the flux. Uh, let us say that uh, in uh, the Newtonian case, uh, this relation is uh, linear and uh, it is given when lambda is equal to zero, it is given uh, by this proportionality where K is uh, the integral of the solution to this problem. So now we have uh, for any alpha, this uh, um, uh, Poisson velocity, and now we provide the appropriate scaling, knowing, knowing that uh, the velocity in uh, the uh, boundary conditions is of order of epsilon, 
uh, we can uh, 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 derive from, the, from there that we need to scale the problem in the following way. We contract the cross section one over epsilon times, and we have to replace the right hand side alpha by alpha divided by epsilon. Then uh, solving this problem, uh, we discover that we can reduce this problem to some problem which is independent of epsilon. And the relation is as follows. Here, VP alpha is independent of epsilon and we have to divide by epsilon the arguments and multiply V by epsilon. So this is the solution of our realistic uh, Poiseuille flows, which we need. So what we do, we uh, calculate uh, for uh, any alpha uh, these dependencies, and uh, we establish the uh, precious uh, slope uh, flux relations, such relations. And with help of these relations, uh, we introduce the so-called problem on the graph. This problem on the graph, it is written here. So on each edge of the graph, we have this second order differential equation, which is nonlinear here because F sigma epsilon J, it is uh, uh, this uh, nonlinear relation. And uh, instead of alpha, we have here the first derivative of the pressure. Then uh, in all nodes, we have uh, this analogs of Kirchhoff uh, junction conditions that the sum of all uh, fluxes is equal to zero. At the ends of the uh, uh, edges of, of the graph on the boundary where we know uh, inflows and outflows, so we know the fluxes, we have the uh, Neumann type boundary conditions. And the pressure is continuous on the graph. But this continuity is respected only for the leading term. For further terms, this continuity will be violated. Uh, this problem can be uh, by some uh, change of uh, unknown function reduced to the problem which doesn't depend on small parameter, uh, taking as new variable epsilon p epsilon. The existence and uniqueness of the solution on the graph uh, is studied in this paper, in, uh, in our paper in algebra and analysis. And uh, the pressure, uh, of course, it is linear. Ah, and by the way, I would like to say that we consider finite graphs, graphs but also it is possible to consider uh, infinite graphs, fractal types. Uh, and here uh, you see the reference on the respective uh, corresponding paper by Nazarov, Kaslov, and Zavarokhin. Sorry, so, you, have, you, you have two minutes. Yes, it's enough. Uh, so the leading term. Uh, after this solution uh, of the problem on the graph, we have all Poiseuille's functions, and we can write uh, f uh, v uh, zero a as this Poiseuille uh, function. We know also uh, the pressure as the solution of the problem on the graph, and this is just the leading term, but without boundary layers. In order to add these boundary layers, we consider one by one all uh, bundles, uh, deleted bundles, and there we consider this problem in the delete, deleted uh, variables. Uh, here, V0 and P0 Xi are known functions. Here, uh, uh, V and S, they come from the solution on the graph. And we can prove that there exists unique solution of this problem and it stabilizes to zero, uh, M zero stabilizes to zero, pressure stabilizes to some constant. And this will be uh, 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 appropriately uh, 
uh, multiplied by cutoff function, this will be uh, the boundary layer corrector. So that if we add them, these boundary layer correctors, to the leading term, we get uh, the complete uh, main term of uh, the asymptotic expansion. And then further, we can iterate it and uh, get uh, the complete asymptotic expansion. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this talk. And uh, questions, please. We have five, five minutes for questions. Uh, Grigory Petrovich, uh, am I, uh, do you have uh, arbitrary um, uh, shape of, uh, uh, of uh, your cylinders? Uh, uh, yes, so the cross section may have arbitrary, uh, uh, arbitrary uh, form. For any, every cylinder, it can be changed and it has arbitrary form. We need only C4 smoothness. Uh, if it is round, then uh, in if lambda equals zero, we have uh, such uh, parabolic shape. If uh, it is not, um, if it is non-Newtonian, it is also some sort of parabola, uh, parabola but not quadratic. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. More questions? So, if not, then let's thank the, the speaker again.